Ladies and gentlemen, music speaks directly to our souls. I know that, you know that, you probably wouldn't have clicked on the video titled Beyond the News if you hadn't before experienced this powerful language that doesn't need our brain to process, but that speaks a language that's connected to our souls. And Bach especially, he is a master in discovering hidden corners in that gigantic room that our soul represents. And we get to discover ourselves a little bit more. We get to know ourselves a little bit more by just listening to the music of Bach. This G minor prelude of his first book of the WTC that we're going to talk about in this episode is especially a great example of that. At first it seems to be a very complex piece, but when we look closely it's surprisingly easy in construction, but Bach wants us to feel that complexity, that confusion almost. He wants us, he wants us to bring to a place where we are actually begging for a solution, a clarification. It sometimes feels in this piece as that we are talking about our life. We want to know some direction and of course after leaving us there, a roller coaster of emotions that happens in this piece, Bach will guide us to the end, to a spot where we get answers and a beautiful solution, and everything will be fine. Let's fasten our seat belts in this roller coaster and dive right into this fantastic piece. So, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Notes. <music> And by the way, the recording you heard at the beginning and also the recording I will be using during these episodes, that is my own recording of the WTC available on three CDs here in this beautiful box. You'll find a link in the description box if you want to buy it. And just a little secret for you, I just today finished practicing the last few of the second book. So the preparation for the recording of the second book is ongoing. Without further ado, let's go back to this G minor prelude. Can we talk about this opening? This is probably a unique opening by Bach and maybe by all composers. I mean, normally when you want some attention from people, whether at our listeners or you go to someone's house to visit, you knock on the door and say, I'm here. We start a piece, right? We are introduced by a fragment, by a motive, by whatever, a melody, something, but not like this. It's like, I don't even ask to enter your room, to enter your house, to enter your soul. I just go there. And without you knowing even, I, I just occupy the place. Right away, we are in the midst of the story. And before you can even breathe, Bach is already in front of you. He's leading you. And that is a sign of the complexity of the piece. Because if you analyze this harmonically, nothing happens at the beginning. It's just a... But by presenting it like this. Repeat, repetition of the G. So, guys, there is a lot of drama in Bach's music. We talked about the E-flat minor prelude. Also, that was not a friendly piece. There was like a very introvert story, a dramatic story. But here, it's almost aggressive. It's brutal. But there is something strange to this opening. Of course, there is this shock at the beginning. But right after the shock, you come to the realization of there is someone with a lot of pain. So much pain that he is like shouting, he's crying out loud. And again, emotions. We are now right from the beginning, right from the start, in one of those hidden secret corners of our soul. Because we, we can connect to this emotion. We all have those moments of kind of, can I say despair? Not in a really fundamental dramatic way, but like something that you say like, and now what? With the repetition of the G. Heavy, gravitate, gravitas. And then in the second bar, again, harmonically, nothing happens. Again, it's the same, always the same pattern. The 
the right hand started story. It has our attention now. And now what? We have this move ya da tam ba dum da da tam da tam. It's almost beautiful. With these jumps, it seems to be unorganized. Always study to the high G, we're going down. Again, going down, drama. But there's a G. Left hand remains calm, G minor. And the right hand that is in the lead of the story, again, repeats what was at the beginning, the trill, but now an octave lower, so we're toning down his voice or her voice, I mean, whatever. But then the left hand starts, and the left hand on that trill goes down as well. So this, this harmonic sequence, it's very simple again, but yet Bach creates this kind of confusion. You would say it okay. No, 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 no. Also, typically Baroque, you would say, but Bach uses those elements. He goes to the augmented four. And then on top of that, and then we come to the dominant. And then we go to the C, but that's another story. So, very much a, a, a kind of almost aggressive opening introduction of some like like these elements ya da tam ta tam ta ta tam tam it's like i want to say something but like whatever the left hand staying patient going down leading to the dominant here interval drama And now we come to the conclusion actually of the opening. Barely four bars in the piece. And as a listener, you have like, where is all of that going? Let's listen to this fragment. dominant of G minor, which is obviously D major. We are in bar 5 now, so we are in G major, but I don't know if you've noticed, there seems to be some a, a, a kind of dialogue going on. The left hand suddenly is harmonically way more active, and not only harmonically, it seems to participate and it's going to guide that right hand, that voice, that upper voice that was screaming at the beginning, screaming for answers. And it's guiding them, it's guiding that voice in an unbelievable way. Again, we talked in episodes before, major changes, major harmonic, major emotional changes in a piece not always require a lot of harmonic input and Bach is giving another example. So we come here in G minor. <laughs> I mean from from that we come now it's like it's like the pastoral symphony of Beethoven like it's opening their landscape and you think like why were we panicking? What was, what was going on? Why were we confused? I mean, life is easy, right? We are in F major. And listen how quickly this goes. And 
And where do we go? Same pattern, same motive. Dum da da dum dum bum pa 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 bum. But not going down, up. Guys, life is all about positivism, right? Positivism in English. I hope. The right hand, the upper voice, almost get lyrical now. Like, can you imagine that from here? Serious, and now? And then the left hand, or the bass voice, takes the trill. It's almost as like showing you what can be done? Beginning. Left hand or the accompaniment if you want. Stayed calm. G minor. Go. We went to the to the dominant. Changed one note, and then, like, we shake hands and we say, or we embrace each other and we say, "Shall I give you an example of how you could have thought about your problems at the beginning?" They can sound like this. And then the left hand says, okay, I will take your motive and then listen to me what I have to say about it. And there, of course, we add a little bit of dialogue, but that's for the next fragment. Let's listen now how we go from this G minor opening and we create this openness, this landscape, green colors, blue sky, just spring in a piece that was doomed to be so negative. That's Bach on his best. Let's listen. fragment took us back again from B flat major which is of course very related to G minor it's a relative key and we go to C minor uh, so we add a little bit of dramatic flavor again because let's face it when someone has this deep emotion of almost depression like on an aggressive level as the opening as we talked about and you have a reflection of someone listening, which we had in the B-flat major section, there comes a moment that you say like, okay, but that's all fine. But I feel that despair again. Can we talk about that? And so that's what happened here. So there we go with the B natural, we go to C minor. And what happens now is a kind of dialogue. The upper voices you have this asking questions getting answers but we don't get to an answer we don't get to an answer like that positive voice in the bass that was so like okay but there is a there is a landscape just enjoy life now starts to understand while during the communication, during this dialogue, like, okay, but I see now a little bit your problem. Let's talk about that. And to acknowledge that, the left hand, the bass is going to repeat the trill again, but not like we had in B flat major, optimistic, but like, let's stay in C minor. And acknowledging the problems, we go down, the lowest note on the instrument at that time, well, for this, I shouldn't say for that time, there were already, I mean, let's not go into that, but it's the lowest note here in this piece, that's, 
at the same moment the right hand goes up. So we go down, listen, and see also in the score the, the, the beautiful symbolism. At the moment where the bass reaches the lowest note, acknowledging the confusion and the despair, like, I hear you, the right hand goes up. It is like, do you know that feeling when you are able to a friend of your partner to really communicate what's bothering you? And then suddenly there is this click, there is this connection, this human interactive, beautiful, what makes us humans, you know? We connect to each other. That happens here. The right hand still is in C minor, but as a kind of thank you, relief, you, you feel what I feel because you go so low to the C. I go up. And it's not by accident that Bach does this. Diminished interval. So let's talk now about your problems. And the dialogue becomes a little bit more fragmented. Like we had first... It's a very difficult piece on clever chord, by the way. And if you're not warmed up, like... But now it's like a little bit more... You have these rhythmical frictions all over the place. And that continues for a while. We had that interval in this bar. Now we have it here. A beautiful melody then. It's simple. Again, what I said at the beginning, when you zoom in on this piece, it gets simple, but there is a complexity that's almost beautiful. And here you have a very simple melody. Almost for the first time, we have a consecutive line of notes. Of course, we go down. We had these intervals here. And now Bach is just like emphasizing this, giving this, this augmenting, so to say, the importance of that interval by giving it an quarter notes. And what happens for the rest? Not much. The bass... So listen. And you would think this, but it is this. Which is a very normal, typical Baroque harmony, but it is super powerful. The timing which Bach uses here is incredible. You don't expect that. We think we come to a conclusion. And what next? Let's first listen to this fragment. of course is is a dominant seven of G minor in the reversed in, 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 in the reversed mode and it leads us obviously to G minor again but that's the harmonic principle Bach is using that harmonic principle in order to tell his story and what it does is like the, the left hand now completely goes with the right hand like let's talk about these problems right this is harsh if you if, if, I can imagine when you play this piece and then you might not always feel the power of the interval, but you, you should look for that. This is not something that comes just for free. This has a price, this has a cost, this is emotion. And then
notice now we get the same motifs as in bar 5. We had it here. But bar 5. What happens now is the left hand takes the right hand, not down, it goes along with the right hand. It doesn't say sty stable, it doesn't open anymore to F major, we are going down together. And the left hand does it with big intervals. These are questions. Okay. So we are culminating to a climax, like the, 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 the motives, there is a dense, there's a denser and denser structure here. Sorry. This of course is the culmination of tension, also that is a normal baroque harmonic structure. It leads to the cadence. Of course, now there is no escape anymore to go back to the tonica, to the to G minor. But how is Bach going to bring us home? The coda. I'm playing it slower now to just give you the, the make you the, feel the harmonic power. So how do we bring this home? You notice what happens? The bass stays there. It's a left hand that at the beginning was so comforting and say like, there is your landscape. It's not so bad. That bass that listened and that said, okay, I, now I understand what you want to say. I, I go with you on your journey, your roller coaster of emotions. But now I will bring you home because this is guiding you, the G and the B. Again, these motives, but they are, they are captured, they're prisoned. And then... I've said it before, pain in music can be beautiful. It's a little bit the same with this piece. This has some very dark aspects, but there is some beautiful elements in that as well. And that's the beauty and it's the power of music. That's like converting something that really is painful. And talk about it in a language that actually also can solve it, like purifying our souls, bringing something home bringing you home, bringing us home. And Bach is a master in that. He would say, and God we trust. And that's maybe true for you as well. But each and every time you get to speak about what really bothers you. And he just finds those spots. He finds those things that bother you, that bother us. And maybe we do not recognize that immediately, but it connects to us. Last time I spoke about a fugue and how the fugue represents a dialogue that this word is desperately in need of. So you can access that video by clicking on this thumbnail. And guys, if you want to stay a little bit closer to the project, we have a beautiful Patreon community with a Patreon page that has a lot of content. For instance, practicing sessions in which I just practice this music live for you, podcasts, updates, concerts, and everything that you actually, I think, will enjoy. You can check it out by clicking on the link in the description box and hope to see you over there. But for now, thanks for watching and we see each other soon again. Bye.